Spirit Seer's Cocktail Corner. I'm Mike, and today what I have for you is called the Slow Start. Now this is actually one of my original cocktails that I came up with. Uh, I was wanting to play with St. Germain and Slow, that's not Slow Gin, that is Jamaican rum. One moment, let's uh, swap that for actual Slow Gin. Okay, now, with actual Slow Gin this time. Okay, <laughs> so Slow Gin, Gin, St. Germain, and uh, orange, uh, these are the, the caramelized orange bitters from Beehive Bitters. And uh, I, I wanted to make a cocktail with the St. Germain. I've had this bottle for a few weeks and I've not used it for much as you can tell. Uh, and I, I kind of wanted to experiment with it and I wanted to play with it. So let's do that. So as with any flip cocktail, that is a cocktail using an egg white, uh, what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to get a mason jar real quick so I can, let's get one that's not so big. Apparently that's all I got. Grab a big one there for the, uh, the egg yolk at the end and I'll give that to the dog. But for an, a flip cocktail, you will start with the egg white. Uh, it's just easier that way. And you want to do a dry shake. And, and by that, I've explained this before, you have no ice in your, in your shaker to begin with. And then when you get to, when you get to the point where you've got the rest of your spirits in there, the, well, that's doing funny stuff. Um, when you get to the point where you're adding the rest of the spirits, the rest of the spirits are going to sanitize the egg. So there's, I have never been able to find a single report of somebody catching salmonella from an egg white cocktail. Uh, you can get it from other things. I see people from time to time catching it from uh, actually flour, which is a thing. Uh, that's actually largely why they tell you not to have raw cookie dough the flour becomes a problem. All right, now, as with any flip, add your spirit. I want to start with the highest proof spirit first. And for this, I'm using uh, Water Pocket Temple of the Moon Gin. Absolutely fantastic gin, absolutely adore it. And we're gonna use an ounce and a half of that. Such a great, Great mild, just, um, it doesn't punch you in the face with a pine tree. It's, it's a really good approachable gin. It works great in cocktails. I'll sip on it by itself as well. Just the, the, the grains of paradise and, and other, uh, other, the, the coriander, that, that's what I was looking for. The coriander sits very far forward on this. Uh, it's, it's such a great gin. Highly recommended. If you don't have a bottle, go get two or three minimum. Um, I guess I want to get these out of the way so you can see what I'm doing. All right, so ounce and a half of slow gin to go with the ounce and a half of normal gin. And I mentioned this in another video, my coupe glasses want at least three ounces of, of liquid in there. Otherwise they look really short, like there's not much in there. Uh, so I'm gonna add to that a half ounce of St. Germain. This is an elderflower liqueur. So it's got, it's got a few elements of herbal. It's got a little bit of bitter in there as well. It works really well in this cocktail, I think. Uh, the, the cocktail, well, I'll talk about it a little bit more. I've, I've made this cocktail a few times now and I've really enjoyed it. So as with any flip, no ice. We want to get this frothed. And the easiest way to do that is without ice just like you would whip an egg. This is like a meringue, basically. An alcoholic meringue is basically what you're doing here at this point. And I've not had good luck with, uh, with flip cocktails, so we will see whether I coat my kitchen with egg white. I'm always a little bit nervous when I pop that seal. I've had some bad experiences recently. A little bit gun shy. Let's add full cube. And we'll crack a second. Hopefully that's not tempered too much. Yeah, it's kind of tempering. We'll lay back on that. And now here's where we actually dilute the cocktail down a little bit, add some water, uh, and chill the cocktail as well. So we want to shake it again. There we go. Oh, 
Okay. All right, now, I tend to double strain my cocktails these days, especially with the cracked ice. You end up with little ice flakes that are just kind of unpleasant. So let's get that strained here. And look at that beautiful color. I love the color Slow Gin provides. And I'm actually going to be ordering some slow berries here in the next few weeks. Hopefully I can get those in here soon. And then we can, I wanna make my own slow gin. I've been wanting to do this for years. And then now that we've got that beautiful color with a nice frothy top, we want to float a, an express sage leaf. So let's express that real quick. Missed. Okay. Love that smell. Just float that guy on top. And there you have it. This is the slow start. Cheers. So right up front, you get that sage leaf right in your nose and it's, it's beautiful. I love the smell of sage and, and the sage, uh, the sage is a very fantastic pairing with gin. A lot of gins actually use sage as, a, as an herbal additive. And so this adds really well. It, it ties the sage with the St. Germain and the slow, uh, slow berries very, very beautifully. And then from there, it kind of goes into a fruity note from the slow berries and then goes into a floral into the, the St. Germain, the elderflower liqueur and then kind of finishes with a little bit of bitter and the entire way is just creamy and it's rich and it's just, it's almost dessert in a glass. There's a little bit of sweetness from the slow, uh, slow gin. Slow gin is a sweetened gin. So it is going to be a, it is going to be a little bit of a sweeter, uh, sweeter drink. Uh, in addition, you also have the elderflower liqueur. Again, it's a liqueur, there's sugar added. So you do have that sweetness. It's, it's, almost dessert in a glass. It's creamy, it's sweet, it's herbal, and it's got a little bit of a bitter finish. So um, obviously not chocolate bitter, but a little bit of that, like a little bit of that bitter that's just really good. It offsets the sweetness, balances things out, and just is a superb cocktail. Usually when I create a new cocktail, I agonize over it for weeks. I make it dozens of times. I, I think when I did my penultimate, I did, eight, nine revisions minimum. And then on top of that, I made it a number of times on top of that to perfect and, and make sure that I understood the in, ins and outs of the cocktail. And I shorted something here intentionally and shorted something there intentionally. And just to see what, how catastrophic that would be. And, and this thing just really kind of came together. I slapped it together in, in an evening and was really enjoyable. And I was expecting to fight with this cocktail a lot more than I have. It's really fantastic. I, and, and I realize I'm ringing my own bell here, but it, it's fantastic. It's creamy, it's rich, it's dessert in a glass. Keep the spirits, guys.